Uh, my name is Matos Ramaramura. I'm the area source manager for Malta Tech Rubber. I'm in charge of the uh, mill linings. We sell solutions for mill liners for, for the ball mills. So today I'm going to be talking about optimizing the mill liners for maximum payback. Obviously that has to do with money. We, have to, we want to make sure that we make you guys rich in terms of maintenance and uh, getting the right product for your applications. So poor liner design has a detrimental effect on milling performance and on liner's life. This results in loss of revenue and increased operational costs. Reduced milling efficiency can result in excessive power usage, decreased recovery of valuable minerals. So it is hoped that this presentation will give mill operators to select the suitable mill liners with a view of decreasing production costs and maintaining mill performance near to optimum level. Optimized mill liner, optimized liner design can be used to strike the best economic balance between the, li the liners of life and the grinding efficiency thus enhancing the profitability of a mining operation. So frequent conflict rises between the liners of life and also the, the, the efficiency. Because sometimes the mill liners would come to you and say, okay, we're going to sell you the liners that can last longer, and then you don't have to worry about that. But it's not always about the, the life of the liners. It's making, making sure that you get the the correct grinding. They, they, you have to improve the efficiency of grinding of the mills as well. So longer life can mean that someone can basically put uh, thicker liners and sometimes putting the thicker liner can reduce the volume. That will result in reducing the, the throughput. And also when someone talk about life, they can be uh, talking about giving you the, the learners that can last sh for, for a short time, but giving you the, 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 the best grind. That, that means the efficiency of your mill now will increase. So when you design the mill liners, you need to find a balance between life and efficiency. So that's what my presentation is all about. So mostly you get uh, people talking about liners. What, what is the function of a liner? People will say, the liners is there just to protect the expensive mill shell. The liners is there just to protect the mill shell. But that's not basically it. It's even more, it's more than that. The liners is there to protect the mill shell. Yes, we agree. But there's also another important role of these liners. Those liners are also there to make sure that they, they, they transfer the rotary uh, energy onto this grinding media so that you can get the, the, the correct grind. So when you design these liners, there are lim certain limitations. Mostly when you design the liners, you would have a, you, 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 will, you will be guided by the material that you use for construction and also the application of these liners. And the limitation can be limited by casting, molding, or handling constraints of these liners. Because remember when you install these liners, some mills may have uh, may, may not uh, may, may have smaller uh, what what do they call it doors? So that is uh, the, uh, the other uh, limitation as well. So basically, this is what hap happens inside your mill. You would have an area what they refer to as a empty zone, where there nothing in, in the empty zone nothing happens there, and you also have a dead zone. And then you have two important zones as well. You have the impact zone, the toe, and you also have the grinding uh, where there can be abrasion or cascading. So when you design these liners, that's what you need to look at. You shouldn't go to the, to the customer and just copy what the opposition is doing because sometimes the opposition may be wrong from the beginning. So it means when you just copy what the opposition is doing, you are continuing with the problem. So hence you need to give the correct design for, for based on the customer's uh, application and requests. So there are, there are, there are poor liner design process indicators. 
How do you know that your liners are, are, are poorly designed? You know, those are the, some of the questions that you need to ask, ask yourself as a person responsible for, 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 for milling uh, mill liners or the, the, the milling process. So you can see that your liners are, are poorly designed when there's a dramatic uh, mill perform uh, uh, dramatic change in terms of mill performance during these liners, and when they say incorrect product in your ball mills, sometimes when you put uh, new liners, you may find that your throughput decrease or your volume decrease. That will tell you that your liners are not designed to 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 to, to the optimum level or where it needs to be designed. It means maybe the thicker liners have been used to give you more life or it could be that uh, the, the lifter bars are too high and obviously when you check your, 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 your primary mills you'll find that maybe the primary mill is producing fine grind which is not supposed to and your primary mill maybe the, the throughput also decreases that is just an indication to show that your liners have been poorly designed and when you look at the regrind you may find that maybe you, are, you have a, a recirculating load and then you also see that maybe the particles that are on, on the regrind mill are oversized. That is an indication that your liner design are poorly designed. I mean your liners are poorly designed. So those are the things that you need to look at before you can uh, propose a solution to the customer. So when you design the liners, there are certain things that you need to look at. Yes, the customer will tell you the requirements, this is what I need, and then this is what I'm hoping to get. So obviously, when you design good liners, you are hoping that the milling efficiency will, will have to increase, and the plant throughput will also have to increase. Mill availability and mineral recovery will need to, to, to improve as well because you don't want to, to, to waste your, your minerals by not uh, recovering uh, what you need to cover. And also, when you design this liner, certain things will have to decrease as well. If you check your power usage, the power is the most, uh, is, is what is, is the most, con uh, how can I put it? It's where most of your costs go to. And if you design your liners poorly, that you can even increase higher. So you just end up being uh, on, on paying uh, for electricity when you're not supposed to. So when you design these learners, you want to decrease the power usage and your grinding media consumption, you need to decrease that. And obviously maybe when you are on contract, sometimes you need to decrease the liner cost per ton treated down as well. So that, those, are the just guide, uh, those are the guidelines when you design these learners that you need to, to look at when you offer the solution to the customer. Because sometimes you find people saying that uh, we, we have the best liners, uh, our liners, you can, they can last you two years. So immediately as a customer, that's when you need to see Uri. No, this one is just a salesman. He's trying to sell, to sell me something that may even bring problems into my plant. So these are the questions that you can ask any mill manufacturer, I mean any uh, liner manufacturer, when you want to buy these liners. And obviously, very often, perception is that cheaper liners, they give you the, the lowest cost, but in reality, is the best grind gives you the best profit. Liner, de liner design should seek the balance between life and grinding efficiency. Long, longer life sometimes could mean that installing a thicker liner or higher lifter bars, which I obviously said it can reduce your throughput. And let's just have a look at the combination cost. From the pie charts there that we have, you can see that the liners, they don't really take much of your cost. Because the thing that you, if you can check, the energy is what takes uh, most of the cost in terms of, of, of maintenance or um, uh, running these mill liners. And then if you check at the egg mill, you, you can see that energy takes about 63% of the cost. And the liners take only about 37% of the cost. But that 37% uh, of the cost can even increase the usage of electricity. 
to even higher amount if not designed properly. And on the seg mill, because you now have the, 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 the grinding media there, also the grinding media will take uh, some of the cost as well. And you see that on the seg mill, normally the grinding media and the, land, the, the, the learners, they go, they take about 21% each. Still, uh, energy takes most of your, your, your cost there. And then if you look at the primary ball mill, that decreases the liners because mostly in the, in, the, in the secondary or primary, some they even use uh, rubber liners, which in terms of cost is even much lower. Hence, you have the, in the secondary ball mill, your liners uh, takes about 6% and your energy 49%. And obviously, the grinding media as well will take about 45%. That is just an indication that these liners that they can, these liners, they don't take much of your course, but if you don't select them wisely, you can end up with a problem where you are overspending on your mills in terms of maintenance and the, the, the downtime as well. That will delay the production and so on. So when we, take about, when we talk about a maximum payback, Obviously, we need to make sure that the shareholders, they, they, they get the maximum profit out of that uh, operation. And you as a mill operator, obviously, we don't want you to have headaches. Obviously, you need to have good uh, sleep by making, the, making sure that your plants are running at a steady state. And uh, you want to make sure that they, 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 they don't decrease the throughput. So the, obviously, the, the throughput must increase as well. So, like I, like I said, as a mini manufacturer, you do not sell, I mean, we, we do not sell a, a, a liners. I will, I will talk this from Maltotech because I'm working for Maltotech. I always have a problem with my boss, the way he, he always tells me, we do not sell liners, we sell solution. We don't believe in that one, uh, uh, one solution fits all situation. Obviously, when you, when you tell us, okay, this is what I want, we come to your, to your site, we want to make sure that we understand your request, we listen to you, we want to make sure that we give you the best solution that you want, that will also help you in future. By giving you the maximum payback, obviously, that will keep your business running and it will also keep us, our, our business running as well. So that's why we say we do not sell solution, I mean we do not sell liners, but we sell solution. So even as a mill operator, this is just a guideline that you can ask whoever is selling you liners that this is what I want. Don't just uh, go to a, to, to a supplier and say, okay, these are the liners, this is what I want. Obviously, you need to make sure that you are getting the right trajectory of the, of, 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 of the charge. We, we also use a, a software that we call Miltrage when we design these liners. You give us uh, your... your, 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 your your operation condition and, and, and all the, 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 the mill uh, parameters, we put it on our, on our system, that is mill trade, and that will also guide us on designing these liners. But we, only, we do not only rely on that, we also have uh, some mill experts, or some liners experts in our division where we sit down, we discuss, and we make sure that we give you the best solution for your uh, application. I thank you.